What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. So I want to go ahead and continue with this three best players in the history of each NBA franchise. Now, some of these teams are a little tricky because I had the same issue with the Nets, if you recall that team. The now Brooklyn Nets, long time New Jersey Nets. See, I include the ABA. So, since I include the ABA in my rankings, I'm going to have different players than, say, anybody that's just looking at the NBA. Period. If you just look at all these teams since the merger and don't include the ABA, you're going to have different players. So now I'm with the Indiana Pacers. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's real difficult for me to come up with a, a greatest. I, 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 can, I can give you my top three. But the greatest... I mean, I guess if you look at overall accomplishments and, and numbers and longevity, you got to go with Reggie Miller, right? But even Reggie Miller said in his mind, the greatest pacer ever was the Raja, right? But to me, as far I know Raja was more skilled obviously than Mel Daniels but Mel Daniels played for so long for the Pacers in the ABA and was so dominant in his position that I actually have him ranked higher than Roger so to me I'm, I don't know if I'm a high, I guess by technicality because of longevity I'll give it to Reggie Miller right I'll give it to Reggie Miller 18 years in the NBA from 1987 to 2005. For about ooh, 13 years, I think, he was the all-time leader in three-pointers made. He surpassed Dell Ellison in 97-98 season. He retired with 2,563 pointers. Uh, well, when he surpassed Dell Ellison, he was number one all-time in three-pointers made in 97-98, I believe he was. He retired in 2005 with 2,560 made threes. He was a 39.5% career three-point shooter. When uh, Ray Allen passed his mark in the 2010-2011 season, that encompassed a full 13-year window where Reggie was the guy, number one. Reggie still is one of the great shooters of all time. Over 47% from the field overall for his career. 39.5% uh, from three-point range. And uh, 88 point, I think it's 88.8% 8 from the charity strike for his career. Now, when I look at the 39.5%, that's really, really, really good. Just a, a fraction under 40%. Now, what makes that remarkable when you really look at Reggie's career, is that Reggie was not a, the greatest at creating his own shot. He could create his own shot, but he relied a lot more on screens and picks. You know, um, so, and, and, and often, defense is keyed in on him so well that he didn't really have but just a little bit of sliver of room to get a shot off a lot of times. So I, I, I'm just, I really wonder how would Reggie, I know he had that most ugly form, but I really wonder how he would play in today's NBA. I really believe with the looks, if you give him Clay Thompson type looks, I really wonder what his percentage would be. I honestly think, I'm, because when you look at the Pacers, he didn't really have any other guy for the most part on his team, to open the offense up for him. He was the only guy that could really shoot from outside on the team consistently. He had Chuck Person earlier on, but Chuck was gone by 91, I think. And then he had a broken down, you know, Chris Mullen by 97. But for that meat of his prime, 91 and 97, he didn't really have any other real shooters on his team, any other real scores. Plus, they were in a defensive era where the spacing wasn't the same. So I do, I wonder how this guy would shoot in today's NBA from outside. I think he would be 
it, probably at least at Steph Curry level, you know, uh, but you know, he doesn't have the ball handling anywhere near of a Steph Curry, but he appeared in one NBA Finals back in 2000. They lost in six to the uh, Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, probably the best team he was on, though, uh, at least for the whole season, was the 98 Pacers that took the Bulls to seven games and really gave the Bulls the biggest test of their dynasty era. But probably the best team that he was on that wasn't meant to be was the 2004 Five Pacers. That team was destroyed by the Malice of the Palace. That might have been Reggie Miller's best shot at winning a championship, that 2005 Pacers team. Um, Reggie Miller was also known for his clutch ability. Uh, I don't think he ever won a three-point contest, though, ironically. I think he appeared in more three-point contests than anybody else, but he never won it. I think he came in second a couple times, but I think he never won the award. Uh, oddly enough, I mean, won the contest oddly enough, but um, 25,279 career points. I got to give it to Reggie, number one all time. Then I'll go with Mel Daniels. Now, Mel Daniels was not the talent that Roger uh, Brown was, but I mean, he's one of the most dominant bigs in the history of the ABA. Um, I think he averaged something like 16 and 16 in his career in the ABA. One of the dominant big men, uh, I believe, he is the all-time leader in rebounds uh, in the ABA. And he has the second highest rebounding average in the ABA behind uh, Artis Gilmore. Matter of fact, I think, now that I readjusted, I think uh, in my mind, I think Mel Daniels averaged 16 and 15 for his career. I think it's 16 and 15. I think it was... Uh, Artis Gilmore averaged about 16 rebounds a game. But Mel Daniels, dominant, dominant player. And, uh, matter of fact, let's look at some of these guys' accolades. Um, kind of a little fuzzy with Mel Daniels in the years that I think he won a. Let me see something. I know he won a title. At least one title with the Pacers. I'm trying to see three, three ABA championships. That's why I put him up higher than that. I remember something: three ABA titles, two league MVPs. It was a seven-time ABA All-Star with the Pacers, uh, 1969 All-Star Game MVP, four times All ABA First Team, ABA Rookie of the Year, three times leading the ABA in rebounding. And he's on the ABA all-time team. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember how many, uh, on top of my head, I couldn't remember how many ABA championships he had. But, yeah, that's why I put him ahead of Roger because of his accolades. I mean, one of the most dominant bigs in the history of the ABA. And then third, I have Roger Brown. Roger Brown was, for at least a stretch in the ABA, the best one-on-one -on -one guy. He was like the closest thing the ABA had to a Kobe. Um, you look at some of his highlights, you could see some moves that you frequently see in today's NBA back when he was playing in the early 70s. Um, the Hezzies, you know, he, he had that shit in his game then. Um, I saw he was murdered, but he played within the confines of the offense. Now, he could break free when he got it going or the offense was stagnant and it wasn't working. And he could go off of 35, 40, 45, even 50 points. Um, but usually he played within the confines of the offense. And usually he was on a good team, so he could do that. And, and that was one of the things that people got to understand about these guys in the 70s and 80s for the most part. <clears throat> when they keep comparing... These guys today who, who got the green like to shoot the ball so often, they weren't playing like that in the 70s. You know, you had good teams. And uh, contrary to what you keep hearing in the, in the media, actually 
these teams were pretty talented and pretty deep. Got remember there were fewer teams, so the talent pool isn't as spread out. So you have guys that you know in this league now that has thirty teams and is rumored to be possibly in the future thirty two or thirty three teams. So talent's gonna be even more spread out. Uh, back in the seventies, you had. By 1980, you had 23 teams, but at the beginning of the decade, I think you had like 15 teams or 16 teams, 17 teams. So you had more talent per team. So because you had more talent per team, um, you know, you had more scores. You had more uh, 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 talent coming off the bench per team. You just had better teams talent-wise. And because these guys were used to playing in college back then, they knew how to play within a team concept. So that's why Roger Brown's numbers, 17 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, don't jump out at you. But he was great. Uh, 1970 ABA Playoffs MVP, 4-time All-Star, 3-time ABA Champion. And he's on the ABA All-Time team. Bill Cosby, I remember, spoke real highly of Roger Brown um, in a documentary about uh, the Roger as he was known. He's number 35 retired by the Indiana Pacers as well. And as far as Mel Daniels is concerned, his number 34 is retired by the uh, Indiana Pacers. So those are my three greatest. Now just to do honorable mentions, of course, um, you got Paul George, you got Mark Jackson, you got Jermaine O'Neal, uh, Chuck Person, uh, Rick Smith, um, let's try to go through my head, the Pacers, uh, George McGinnis, um, George McGinnis probably be much higher up there, matter of fact, you could argue George McGinnis is fourth. Uh, maybe some people might have him third. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, those are some honorable mentions off the top of my head as far as great Pacers players. But uh, tell me what you guys think.